But let's talk about this macroeconomic landscape these days because it's pretty confusing, honestly. Uh, that's how I would describe it. You know, some people are saying that we're going to have no landing and things are going to just truck along swimmingly. Others are predicting that we're about to have a massive collapse. You know, it just feels like we're in the eye of a storm. And so I'd like to just start and just ask both of you, how are you viewing the global macroeconomic economy and financial markets more broadly today? Like, I'll throw it to you, Preston, and then I'll get James's thoughts. I think people have to start with the, the idea, if credit markets, bond markets around the world, um, the yields keep going higher, what does that actually mean? Um, Because that's what we're seeing. And in February here, um, you're seeing a swift sell off continue with yields going higher. And so you have to ask yourself, where's that buying power going? Um, If people are selling bonds, they're they're either holding that in cash or they are buying something like equities or commodities. They have to do something with that selling. Um, And I think that that's that's the question. So. If bond markets continue to sell off, and it looks like they just can't stop selling off uh, because in, inflation prints over in Europe and inflation prints here in the U.S. aren't really kind of settling down, uh, where does that buying power go? Um, and the, the irony, and I think the thing that's really hard for people to chew on as they're thinking about that is they're looking at equities and they're saying, well, with higher rates, it's harder for them to produce profits and it's harder to 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 buy equities when their profit margins aren't as high and, and you're looking at it that way, right? But I would I think you're in a you're in a situation that's very different than anything that we've seen in our lifetimes. Um, where you're dealing with a stable currency around the world that you can perform these economic calculations with interest rates continuing to gradually go down and not aggressively move in these big giant whipsaws. So that's the reason why I think everybody's confused is because you're seeing an environment where, and remember, interest rates are the, the key, the keystone of economic calculation. And if they're bouncing all over the place, that's the reason why people are having such a hard time of knowing what's coming next, how it's going to arrive, and how you can possibly perform economic calculation in an environment where interest rates are whipsawing like this. Um, so I guess with all of that, I think that uh, people are going to be surprised with how equities actually perform uh, risk on assets because for a company that can remain profitable in this type of environment, um, I think they're going to get bid because they they perform like a scarce uh, commodity or a scarce, call it Bitcoin, which has scarcity built into it. These things that are scarce, in order for an equity to to be purchased that way, they have to be, be remaining profitable. Because if they're not profitable, the, the company is going to debase the number of shares uh, in order to stay pro because they have to fundraise somehow. So they're going to do that. They're going to borrow. They're going to do these things and they're going to get crushed. Um, they're not going to perform like a profitable business uh, will. So uh, people are going to really have to change the way they think about investing because this type of environment is nothing like they've seen in their life. James, got anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I love the idea of scarcity. I think that the world <clears throat> has already began a transition from an era of abundance to an era of scarcity. And this could be a conversation for hours in and of itself. But just to go back to Preston's point on interest rates, markets, the one thing that markets hate is uncertainty. If you tell people earnings are going to go down 50% and then we're going to re- we're going to reset and then we're going to grind our way back. You can put that into Excel and you can figure out what the NPV is on an asset. But that uncertainty is what really sends markets into a tailspin. And when we were at zero percent, the big word that Preston kept saying was profit. No one cared about profit. Think about how many profitless tech companies were trading at 30, 40, 50, 60 times sales and were burning hundreds of millions of dollars of cash flow a year. When the risk-free rate is zero, you can get away with that. When the risk-free rate is approaching four, five, like forget about all the conjecture about whether we're gonna cut or not. If we stay somewhere three to 5% in terms of rates, that old free money just bid up stuff into oblivion because one day they might magically be profitable is over. 
So I think the theme for this year is going to be profits and profit margins because everyone can raise revenues in the first innings of inflation. You see in the newspaper, inflation's up, consumers have stimulus checks, everyone's doing fine, raise prices, your revenue goes up, but your cost of goods sold and your SG&A, so your expense items, they lag. So that's what I think is going to be the biggest theme for this year and next is what business models can actually maintain or grow profit margins. And I think they're going to be a lot more rare than people think, but those that can will absolutely get bid.